Okay, good morning, everyone. I uh, hope everyone had a lovely long weekend uh, and got some much needed rest and relaxation. Uh, welcome to the webinar on the Municipal Community Grants. Uh, my name is Jillian Armstrong. I'll be your host for the webinar. Uh, I'm the Grants and Communications Administrator for the County Foundation. Uh, these are grants that are funded through the Prince Edward County Municipality and we do the administration of. Uh, we have a couple of people from the municipality who have joined us this morning. Thank you very much for being here uh, to Kim Coster and Jane Bader. Uh, maybe you guys would like to Hi. kind of jump in and talk about your roles and <laughs> Sure. Um, I Hello, everyone. I'm the Community Initiatives Coordinator. Uh, and so I work with the County Foundation on things like this funding uh, to, to answer questions and provide access to the municipality with any questions. Hi, everybody. I'm Jane Vader. I am the Booking Coordinator for um, the Recreation and Community Facilities. Everything from ball diamonds to ice to parks, town halls, you need a rentable municipal facility. I am your girl. Hey, welcome, guys. Uh, so we'll just get started and jump in here. Uh, so we're going to start with kind of the overall agenda for the webinar. I'm hoping to keep it to around half an hour, and then we'll get to a Q&A at the end. Uh, it's going to involve a program overview, so what the grant program looks like, what its purpose is. We'll go over any updates to the program. Uh, we'll talk about a very exciting survey. Well, I think it's exciting. Kim thinks it's exciting, I assume. <laughs> uh, and as well, review the uh, grant application uh, process, including any tips for writing, eligibility. Uh, and then also talk a little about uh, what the adjudication process looks like, what the criteria is on how the applications are evaluated. Uh, and then we'll end with uh, a Q&A. So, uh, my suggestion for the Q&A is that we hold questions and tell that portion uh, and mainly go over kind of general questions that would be applicable to the group. Uh, and then if there's any kind of really specific questions that you have about your particular application, uh, then you can always get in touch with me afterwards and we can kind of arrange a one-to-one. -one. Okay, starting with our land acknowledgement. Sorry, just hiding you guys in the corner a bit. Uh, the County Foundation acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee peoples. Uh, these peoples agree to mutual sharing obligations and responsibilities as stewards of the land and water. We recognize that these are now our shared obligations, working in partnership with our current neighbors, the Mohawk Bay of Whitney peoples. Uh, so launching into a bit of an overview of the Municipal Community Grants Program, uh, the aim of these grants is to improve the well-being and quality of life of the community and its residents uh, by providing financial assistance to nonprofits and community-based organizations. Uh, as I've already stated, funding is based on approved funding by County Council during the annual budget deliberations, which took place in December of this year. I'm sure everyone tuned in <laughs> and the program is administered by the County Foundation. Uh, so we are the local community foundation for Prince Edward County. Uh, they support, uh, these grants support Prince Edward County in the areas of arts and culture, heritage, recreation, environment, and health and human services. Uh, they are intended to support projects across Prince Edward County, uh, so they benefit a wide cross-section of residents. Uh, and within this grants program, there are two grant streams, uh, so grants for over 5,000 and up to 5,000. Uh, and as you'll see, I've listed the total funding available for each of those grant streams, uh, just to so have that kind of generally in your mind. Uh, now we're going to cover a couple of updates and changes to the program from previous years. Uh, so previously, <laughs> uh, anyone who was applying to the Municipal Community Grants Program uh, could uh, apply specifically for in-kind assistance towards the use of rentable uh, community spaces. Uh, and this has gone through a bit of a change because there's been an update to a new 
uh, charges and fees bylaw, uh, which means that any event programming or activities that are no cost to participate in, everyone is welcome to join, is for the good of the community and its members, uh, may request in-kind use of rentable community spaces directly from the municipality. Uh, so Jane, I'm gonna pass over to you and maybe you kind of wanna talk about, you know, anyone who might be interested who would qualify and what that process would look like. Yep. So we revamped the uh, Schedule T in-kind schedule this year. Um, the year before, it did have um, initiatives for food insecurities. It had health clinic initiatives for, say, like the vaccine clinics. And then it included our recreation committees. That Each ward has a recreation committee that puts on programming activities and events for um, their wards and for the county as a whole. Uh, so we found this year that there, like last year coming out of COVID, that there are a lot of good things happening in the community that is for the community. So we really had a look at this in-kind uh, schedule and opened it up um, quite a bit more for those who want to do community events, who those who want to do stuff that's good for the community, whether it be... Um, a seminar about, uh, um, so we have, sorry, I'll just, um, we have a group um, that does horticulture that during Earth Week is doing a big, huge presentation that is open for anybody to attend. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to pay to attend. It is just there for you to participate in. Um, so we revamped it. Uh, so that anybody can participate in the in-kind fee uh, to alleviate some uh, work from the county foundation for those little things that are not wouldn't necessarily fall under the under five thousand. Um, and it was you know a little redundant to go to the community or the county foundation sorry to get in-kind use when they could come directly to us as well. Uh, so as long as it is, is it is open to everybody, it has to be advertised. Advertising has to be like proof of advertising has to be submitted. Um, then it is you know, you, you have the opportunity to use the rentable spaces at in kind as well. So this could also be a, a funeral. We do quite a lot, uh, quite a few large funerals, um, you know, for people who have been in the county forever, who are need a larger space to, to host the celebration. Um, so not everything is included in the in kind. There are additional fees, um, the refundable deposit, if you are going to need a special occasions permit, insurance, stuff like that, those would not be included in the in kind use. It is just for the facility. Yeah, that's a great note, Jane. Uh, thanks for highlighting that. Um, because that kind of leads into my next point, which is um, one, you know, there's uh, certain expenses that may be related still to using a space uh, that you would want to include in your project budget for the municipal community grants. Uh, and also there could be other, other projects where you're like, okay, well, we don't quite fit um, and probably can't qualify uh, for that in-kind use, uh, in which case you would still include uh, the rental cost within your project budget. Uh, so anyone looking for kind of additional information on kind of that in-kind uh, process and requesting that, uh, I've included the rental form and some of the details about the changes to that charges and fees bylaw on our website under the Municipal Community Grants page. Uh, and obviously you can reach out to Jane and I'm sure she can <laughs> direct you. Yeah, absolutely. And then... Uh... Oh, I was going to say something and now I can't think of what it was. Oh. So, but yeah, I'm here for any questions. If I think about it, I'll definitely uh, reach out. Um, and then, sorry, I think that what I was going to say is to still reach out to the County Foundation if you are going to have a paid admission event. You know, you want to do a fundraiser, it's a dinner, but it's $100 a ticket. That's not going to meet the criteria of the in-kind fee through the municipality. That would still have to go through the County Foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks so much, Jane. Okay, and then on to our uh, next topic, which is related to the municipal community grants, but also a bit of a um, broader <laughs> perspective or benefit uh, to a lot of the groups who may be interested in applying for a municipal community grant, uh, which is that we, uh, as in the County Foundation and the municipality have partnered on a survey, uh, the PEC Community Organization Survey, uh, which is focused on getting a better understanding of the community groups and organizations operating in the county. 
Uh, now, the reason that it's included in this presentation uh, is because it will inform a review of the community grants program uh, and provide feedback to the both of us on ways that we could better be supporting the sector. Uh, but Kim, maybe I want to toss to you and you can talk a little bit from the municipalities side about the survey and what that process is going to look like. Sure, thanks. Yeah, as Jillian said, you know, we, it has been a few years since we've reviewed the Municipal Community Grants Program, this program. Obviously, um, from Jane's department, they've already undertaken a review of the in-kind portion and made a really terrific change to it. Um, and in looking at anything else we could do with the program to improve it in future, we kind of came to the conclusion that this was probably a good opportunity to actually learn more about community groups and organizations in general, and other ways that the county foundation and the municipality is supporting, isn't supporting, could support beyond this grant program. So that's why we ended up making it a broader survey. And I'm not sure, um, have people on this call, have, are you aware that there's a survey? Have you seen it yet? Show of hands. It only went out a week ago. So, <laughs> Only went out a week ago. It's open till March 4th, as it says. Um, and I trying to think, um, I should probably like put the link in the chat or something, but um, <laughs> certainly when you, so I'll figure that out, <laughs> but um, certainly when you go to look at um, the County Foundation page about this grant application, the link to the survey is there as well. And an explanation about the survey is there and a link to the survey is there. So there's lots of ways to find it. Uh, it's also on the County Foundation's Facebook page and we'll continue to promote it up until March 4th to remind people. Um, sure. So yeah, that's that's it. And it just asks about um, really trying to understand just the, um, the nature of the sector the challenges you face, the advantages you enjoy working in the county, um, some open-ended questions about, you know, what would your dream for five years from now, how would things look that would allow you to serve the community better? So it takes about 20 minutes and hopefully it's a chance to say everything you ever wanted to say. So please do the survey. <laughs> yes, please do it. And uh, I'll follow up and I'll say that uh, to everyone attending today, uh, I can send out an email afterwards, uh, which has a link to the survey and a lot of the resources that we're going to reference throughout this webinar. Uh, so by the end of this, you know, you'll be sick of us. You'll be like, okay, I get it. We need to do the survey. <laughs> <laughs> and I should say, and it, I mean, this has been stated as well on County Foundation's website, is mm -hmm. doing the survey or what you put in the survey has no relationship to your grant application, right? So mm -hmm. the rules for the grants for 2024 stand as they are, and whether or not you do the survey and what you write in the survey, the survey is confidential. There's no combination of those things. So they're two separate things, but we're doing it at the same time because it's just you know easier for communication to talk to everyone at once. And the results of the survey will influence things like the 2025 Municipal Community Grants Program. Yeah, that's a great note, Kim. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, now on to the reason that we're gathered here today, uh, which is to talk about the Municipal Community Grants. Uh, so I'm gonna start with a bit of a review of just some of the eligibility stuff. So who is able to apply for a Municipal Community Grant and for what types of projects? Uh, so not-for-profit organizations and community groups that support and provide programs and services in the following areas arts and culture, heritage, recreation, environment, and health and human services. Uh, next is places of worship uh, that have partnerships and use space for community activities and groups. Uh, but in this case, the programming does need to be non-denominational and inclusive. Uh, you can only request um, one once per a fiscal year uh, for nonprofits and community-based organizations. So you can only put in one request uh, for one project per year. So you can't submit multiple applications for different projects. Uh, and school boards, for-profit businesses, service clubs, uh, sectarian or political entities and individuals are not eligible for a community grant. Uh, and then this is sort of eligibility continued, uh, which is sort of 
tied to uh, some of the other stuff that we've spoken about, uh, because priority will be given to projects that align with the strategies of the municipality and the county foundation. Uh, so there's kind of a couple different parts to this, uh, one being vital signs. So if you're unfamiliar with vital signs, that's something that happens through the county foundation. It's a national program uh, where there are reports produced and data is analyzed that is specific uh, to Prince Edward County um, and our geography here. Uh, so it's really, it's a free resource. Uh, and there's a lot of great information that you can use not only just for this grant application, Location, but also for other ones. Um, other resources include the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan, uh, Thrive PC Community Economies Pilot Project, <laughs> and the Strategic Priorities of Council. There's a new uh, strategic plan for the you know, next couple of years, and this is a municipal funded program, so making sure that that kind of aligns together would be really great if possible. Uh, and next up is ineligible, so who cannot apply and for different types of projects. Uh, so the funding is considered primary and or covers operation costs for day-to-day -day administration of the program of more than 20%. Uh, so within your project budget, uh, you can only dedicate up to 20% towards operational costs. That would include things like wages. Uh, organizations receiving support through another municipal funding program for the same project. Uh, so that's important uh, to note, which is that if you're receiving any kind of funding already through the municipality for this project, uh, you can apply. Uh, activity takes place outside of Prince Edward County. This is obviously uh, grants that are specific to our community, uh, and therefore the benefit and impact needs to take place here. Uh, grant is to fund a deficit or funding shortfall. Uh, application and component pieces are incomplete. Uh, any previously granted funds are not fully reconciled and all reports received. So that's very important if you've received a grant previously from last year, we do need to receive uh, a update report before you can apply for additional funds. Uh, the applying organization does not meet eligibility criteria, uh, and you cannot apply for annual fund drives and fundraising activities for sustaining support. Uh, and lastly, the organization does not meet the general granting conditions uh, for the county foundation, and those are listed on our website. Okay, sorry, lots of talking today, guys. <laughs> uh, application overview, so we're going to kind of cover uh, what is the uh, information that you'll need to provide as a part of your application for a municipal community grant? Uh, so I should mention before I kind of jump into this, that application forms are now available on our website uh, under the municipal community grants page. You just have to kind of scroll down uh, to the how to apply section. Uh, application forms are also available uh, as online forms, so you can apply through our website, or you can apply, um, there's a printable version of the form if you prefer that, uh, and that can be either mailed or dropped off directly at our office. Uh, we're happy to accept in whatever way works for you. Uh, now diving into the actual application, uh, so we'll need your contact information. I'm sure that this is something uh, you would submit for any application. We need to know who you are uh, and where the funds will be directed. Uh, so including you know, what is the name that you need on the check uh, so that is accurate as well as the address that the funds should be sent to. Uh, so just double checking that. Uh, amount requested, so how much are you asking for the grant? Uh, and then there's a couple of follow-up questions around amount requested. Are you, uh, like if you were asking for $5,000, uh, do you require the full funding for that project to go ahead? Uh, or is this a project where if you receive partial funding, you could still move ahead with the project? Uh, and also have you received other municipal funding? Again, if this, like, just as a reminder, if you're receiving any fund towards the same project from the municipality already, uh, that would be ineligible. Uh, so this is really to have a look at, are you receiving funding from the municipality in other ways uh, towards other projects or expenses? 
uh, areas of interest. Uh, so those would be kind of the uh, specific areas we listed like arts and culture, uh, heritage, recreation, and uh, just deciding, you know, what which of those your project would fit best under. Uh, and then description of project slash event, depending on what you're doing. Uh, and so this is, you know, the meat and potatoes of, you know, what you're requesting the funding to go towards, uh, providing as much detail as possible, kind of the, the plan, uh, including locations, timelines, uh, and kind of laying out what the plan is for the project. Uh, project budget. Uh, so one of the things that I mentioned that you should consider including as part of your project budget is uh, that it's specific to your amount requested. <laughs> uh, so obviously you have your full project budget, but I think it's important to highlight uh, what specifically the grant would be paying for within the project uh, and just yeah trying to be as specific as possible as you can because uh, we want to have a look at what the grant is going towards and how much of the grant is going towards the overall project budget. Annual financial statements. Uh, so this is only required for requests uh, that are $5,000 and above. Uh, so there's like, as I mentioned, there's the two grant streams. So this is only applicable if you're applying for more than $5,000. Uh, and annual financial statements, they don't need to be audited, uh, but they do need to be, um, you know, approved and sent through a accountant, uh, someone outside of your organization to kind of verify them. Uh, and then lastly, applicant profile. Uh, so this is really just a bit of background on who you are, it provides a bit more additional information outside of this specific application. Uh, so who are your staff and board? Uh, what does your organization do? What services do you provide in the community? And then these are some kind of general tips for grant writing. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but I feel like they're ones that across the board uh, just help strengthen your application. Uh, clarity, so be clear in how your project relates back to the focus of the grants. Uh, so in this case, it's the municipal community grants. So community is kind of the key word there. Uh, we're looking at projects that will benefit a cross section of the community, benefit as many residents as possible, uh, or an underserved group. Um, so really, it's got a wide uh, breadth of different projects, uh, but does need to kind of come back to that pillar of community. Uh, and then distill your writing down to the most important points you want someone to take away from them. Uh, now, I realize that sometimes with grants, it's a bit counterintuitive because we're like asking you to provide as much detail as possible about your project, but also at the same time want you to be clear and, you know, distill things down, which can kind of be hard to achieve. Uh, so what I would ask yourself to do is if you were to uh, do a bullet point version of your plan for your project, you know, we're going to, we want to run this program from these dates at these locations for this many residents, uh, and kind of really break down kind of the nitty gritty of the project. Uh, just keeping in mind that the adjudicators who are wonderful and, you know, do their due diligence and really care about the community and will, you know, read each application thoroughly. But because this is a highly competitive grant program, it means that they're keeping a lot in their head in one go. <laughs> uh, so just something to keep in mind is if you were uh, looking at a batch of different applications, what would you want someone to kind of take away from the top of your application and uh, just be as clear as possible about what your project is and what it hopes to achieve? Uh, next up is realistic requests. Uh, as I've already mentioned, this is a highly competitive grants program. Uh, we received close to 50 applications last year, and I think we might hit 50 this year. We'll see. Uh, but uh, you want to frame your application around funds that you need for the project rather than just applying for the max and see what you get. Uh, so I always kind of describe this as, you know, those posters that you see that are like, shoot for the moon and you'll land amongst the stars. And that is not applicable <laughs> to grant programs. 
I think in this case, you really want to be as specific as possible with your request um, and as cutthroat as you can be uh, with being able to show what you need those funds for exactly. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make the adjudicator's job as difficult as possible because you've been so clear with what that funding is going towards and why you need it. Uh, plan for problems. So this is applicable anytime you're submitting a grant request, you want to give yourself plenty of time for gathering information, writing, and submitting. Uh, so you don't want to wait until the last minute to submit. You know, we live in Prince Edward County. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, internet issues. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And you don't want to be stuck in a pinch right before submitting and risk any uh, late submissions because you would not be able to apply then. Okay, I'm gonna have a sip of water, but then I'll continue. Thanks, guys. Okay, so going into the kind of, uh, you've you know written your application, you've hit submit, and then you're like, okay, what happens now? <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't really have an idea about what the behind the scenes looks like. Uh, so when we're putting together an adjudication committee, one of the things, particularly with the community grants, is that we're trying to get a uh, adjudication committee, which is filled with a cross county perspective. Uh, so people from across different wards, different backgrounds, different areas of interest uh, to be as fair as possible, because, you know, we all have our um, own interests and what we feel really passionate about. Uh, but uh, so you want to have a, a breadth of different perspectives to ensure that the process for the adjudication is as fair as possible. Because you have as many different opinions about what people believe should be funded, and therefore, you know, you have people fighting in different corners. Um, and then uh, the adjudicators themselves uh, receive kind of a list of criteria of things to evaluate the applications on. Uh, so starting with community benefit, uh, does your project align with the goals of the grants? Uh, so we've already talked about that a bit. Have you shown how this will benefit the community using data or resources? Uh, so this goes back to kind of some of the things that we've listed earlier, including vital signs, uh, the strategic priorities of council, uh, and the reason that I highlight uh, using data or resources is, again, is that if you're submitting a grant application, chances are you already see the community benefit. You see why it would be a positive thing. Uh, and we all have kind of our own personal biases about what we feel really strongly about. Uh, and so how are you backing up that and providing just a bit more validity to the community need? using these other resources uh, like vital signs, being able to draw kind of the information about, for example, you know, I saw a stat in vital signs about food security and we're hoping to do a food security program. Here's why it's needed in Prince Edward County. This aligns to this goal of council as well. Um, and how are you kind of, kind of piecing those puzzle pieces together to strengthen your case about why this is needed in the community? Uh, financial is the ask reasonable. So again, this comes down to being really specific with your budget. Uh, do you have other funding to support this project or are you 100% reliant on this grant? Uh, in this case, it really does benefit you to have other sources of income contributing towards a project. It just shows that the likelihood of the project being able to be fulfilled uh, is even stronger. Organizational capacity, and this kind of feeds into some of those financial questions. Uh, do you have the resources to carry out the project? Uh, is the timeline achievable? Do you have the team in place? Is this a type of program that you're familiar with and have executed before? Do you kind of have a history of providing these services? Uh, looking at those types of things. Okay, and so one of the important things to know with all applications is that they're first measured based off of their own merit, uh, but this is a highly competitive grants program. And you know the reality is that we typically receive more requests for funding than there is funding available. Uh, so tough decisions do need to be made. 
I think sometimes uh, there's the perception of, you know, uh, like if I don't receive funding or I don't receive the full funding, that it is related to the quality of the application. Uh, and I just want you to understand that, you know, there's a variety of different reasons why uh, you might not receive full funding or funding if you submit a grant request. And sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the project or the application, but just has to look at a variety of other factors within the collective of applications received. Uh, so some of the you know, questions that we'll ask uh, adjudicators to think about is, um, has funding been spread across the county's geography? Or is it really specific to one area in the county? You know, has all the funding ended up in Picton? And we go, oh no, okay, well, we need to make sure that it's spread across the different ports. Um, has funding been spread across different areas of interest or sectors? Uh, you know, or has all of it ended up in arts and none of it's in health? You know, making sure that's kind of across a like, you know, we want a wide breadth of different projects supported. Uh, will a project fill a gap in the community? Is it unique or is, you know, other groups already kind of doing something similar? Uh, does the project benefit an underrepresented group in the county? And lastly, and I've touched on this, uh, will the project have a wide impact within the community and benefit a large portion of the residents living here? So we want to ensure that uh, the funding goes as far as possible within the community. Okay, we're almost at the Q&A, so start gearing up any of your questions. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, I just want to touch on timelines, just so everyone is aware. Uh, so applications for the municipal community grants are due Monday, March 18th at noon. Uh, no late submissions will be accepted. So again, plan for problems ahead of time. Uh, this is just because it would be unfair uh, to those that have submitted on time to submit anything that arrives late. Uh, and applications can be submitted online through our website or email to info at countyfoundation.ca. Uh, you can also drop off paper copies to our office at 35 Bridge Street. Uh, and just so everyone is aware, applicants will be notified of the outcome of their application in May 2024. Uh, with funding to follow to approved applicants by end of May. Uh, any declined applicants will have the opportunity to discuss why they were declined and will receive advice on applying for funding moving forward. So we're always happy to have a conversation afterwards um, to talk about next steps. Okay, thank you guys so much. That's the end of me talking for a little bit. We wanna hear from you guys. Um, and get to the Q&A. So I'll stop sharing my screen so we can see your faces again. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, maybe we just want to kind of start with any hands. Someone wants to be brave. Uh, Carolyn? Um, so I understand that there is a maximum of one application per community um, you know, group for mm -hmm the uh, grants, but what about for the in-kind? Are you only allowed to apply for the grant or the in-kind? Could you do multiple in-kinds and can you do in-kind and the grant or is it kind of one or the other or a limit on that? Uh, Jane, do you wanna maybe jump in for this one? <laughs> so when it comes into the in-kind use of municipal spaces, there is a uh, request for in-kind use form. And as long as all the criteria is met, um, you get in-kind use of the municipal municipal spaces and facilities, sorry. Um, but if it does not meet the criteria, uh, then you would have to go through and apply for the in-kind through the uh, county foundation or for like the under 5,000, over 5,000. Um, so we can definitely get that request uh, form to you quickly so you can fill that out and we can go in case you still need to apply. Okay, so sorry, can I just clarify, is the in-kind one continuously throughout the year we can apply for these things? Or is this also a deadline of March 18th, oh. once a year and it's... I apologize, sorry, anytime, at any time okay. you can apply for the in-kind so use of the facility. Okay, so yeah. even if we apply for the grant and we are successful or not, 
we can still apply for the in-kind use if we've got a community program that meets all the eligibility requirements. Correct, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, I can provide a bit more clarity to you just to jump in and say, you know, uh, one of the things that we wanted to highlight specifically is to answer questions like this, because a lot of organizations previously had to apply exclusively through the community grants, uh, but this separates us. <laughs> so now there's not in-kind funding through the community grants, it's now entirely separate. And so if anyone does not qualify for that in-kind um, request through the municipality, uh, then they would just need to include within their project budget a rental cost uh, through the community grants. But we are, are now separate entities. <laughs> yes, sorry, that was my little... I, we're learning. <laughs> mix up there. That's where I the, under five thousand, over five thousand. Yes. Uh, Barbara, um, I if everyone can be patient, I have a couple of very quick, specific questions. <laughs> um, okay. Have you received other municipal funding this year? In the past? Currently? Mm -hmm. I I don't know what that specifically means. I think uh, it maybe like you know we don't have a specific time frame. I think it's is it still relevant um, to your current funding? So you know is it it's something you've received for the past year that you think is still uh, you know something that you are receiving towards expenses? Um, I think that's probably uh, a good guideline. So uh, we're not looking for you know an extensive history of your funding from the municipality. It's really just to provide a perspective of if you are receiving any funding from the municipality, say within the last year. Um, okay. Yeah. And we okay. can, maybe we could, it's a great point. Maybe we could even clarify that on yeah. the site to say, we mean, are you, look, are you currently receiving or something? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> a, we don't yeah, have anything right now, but we have in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll say yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. And, and you can say specifically what it was for, like that's asked in the okay. question. So you can clarify and there's there's space to kind of provide a bit of feedback and you can say, we received this previously, we might receive it again, or we might not, or, you know, whatever you want to include. <laughs> okay. And can we um, select applicable categories? Can we check multiple? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd encourage you to kind of stick to your your top, <laughs> like, you know, uh, just to provide a bit of kind of a, a window of understanding of the project of sort of its top priorities. But if it is applicable under multiple, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. under fun fact, you say one or two sentences. Do you mean literally one or two sentences? Because this is hard to put into two sentences. Yeah, I think, uh, well, for project description, uh, there's no limit. Um, the fun fact is purely just if you were to, you know, again, think about like top of mind, something that you would want someone to take away to do with your project, uh, what are kind of one to two sentences about the impact? Um. Uh, and one last one, thank you for everyone's patience. Are there community partners involved? Um, does that include other people who may be donating supplies? Yes, yeah, absolutely, you can highlight that. That's great to know. And and again, it also kind of shows the organizational capacity for carrying things out. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> uh, Claire. Hi, good morning. Uh, that was a terrific presentation. Thank you. Um, my question is partially for Jane Vader. Hi, Jane. Um, Hi, Jane. And, and partially for the foundation. When we talk about in-kind use of... Um, municipal spaces, uh, does that include any of the county museums or is that still separate? No, so it includes museums, parks, uh, Crystal Palace and the Prince Edward Community Center, the Wellington and District Community Center. Um, that could include the ice pad depending on the event as well. And so I'm just double checking and sorry, and the ex exhibition grounds. Oh, that's fabulous. Okay, yeah. so what that would mean is in past, um, a couple of years ago, we had the Wellington Museum as our studio space for mm -hmm. um, alchemy. And we got an in-kind grant through the foundation, which financed that. Mm 
Mm -hmm. This year we would not do that. We would apply differently to to the to the municipality. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. So, well, yeah. So <laughs> there, is, there, the in kind use used to go through the county foundation, right? Um, and it would have been like an in kind under five thousand dollars, or an in kind for thousand dollars, whatever you needed it for or applied for, or successful in getting uh, or receiving. Sorry. So what has happened now is that you would have to reach out to me. We will see if you're. Um, the alchemy group would fall under the in-kind use. You'd have to fill out the, the request for in-kind use. Right. If okay. it does not fall under that, then you would have to apply to the county foundation for the funding to cover the rental fee. So you, when you apply for it, you need to let them know it's going to cost X amount of dollars right. to um, host the alchemy group at the Wellington Museum. I have that right, right, Jillian? Yes, exactly. That's perfect. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I, I think for just across the board, if anyone has any questions or is thinking about applying for the in-kind funding, uh, I would reach out to Jane. Uh, again, I'll follow up and I'll send her email along to everyone so that everyone's got it. Uh, you can also find it through the county's website, but just so everyone's got it and we're good to go. Uh, just even if you have a doubt or you're thinking about applying, because uh, Jane will be able to kind of provide you exact feedback on whether or not it's a qualified application. Absolutely. Okay, I will reach out, Jane. Thank you so much. Uh, Carolyn. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, Jane, I just missed when you were listing off the municipal spaces, the museum and stuff, is the library included in that, the libraries? No, the they're, library, separate. Okay. they're ran separately. Perfect. Is there any other questions that anyone has? No? Oh, okay. Well, you know, oh, Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry. I, no, I feel like a lot of these questions are for Jane. Um, so a question that I have is if you're looking for the in-kind donation um, for the use of a facility, and let's say the event is open to everyone, but within the event there are let's say like paid portions like some of it like let's say there's um like uh food for example you don't have to pay to get in but there's food there and that yeah. is something that people charge for how does that work yeah. so that would still as long as it meets the criteria of the event that it's open to anybody to participate in it's free to participate to get into the event of you can have in event purchases um the, this would be so i'm just looking at my sop so um so it would be um, for in-kind use, the event programming or activity must have no mission, registration, or cost to participate. Activities involved in the booking would also be no cost, including but not limited to like bouncy castles, face painting, parade participation, uh, paying for arts and craft supplies, that sort of stuff. Um, so, so optional purchases um, during the booking are permitted. So optional purchases would be food, beverages, say like a raffle or a 50-50 tickets, uh, some fundraising initiatives. Those would not, like that, those are optional. People can choose whether they want to purchase those things or not. Okay. But they don't have to pay to participate in the event. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Oh, Carolyn. <laughs> Sorry, another one. Um, Jane, with regards to the in-kind ones, what are we talking about for timeline of the term turnaround on these? Like if we've got a community event, should we be reaching out months in advance, weeks, days? Like what are we looking at? So it, we do require a minimum of 14 days of advertising for the event. So I would say 30 days to be safe, to make sure you get the facility. I can't make any promises, you know, if, if so if it's something big, something important, you want to get it in uh, sooner rather than later. And then 14 days of advertising is required. Great. Uh, any other questions or thank goodness we had Jane here. I just get to sit here and look pretty. <laughs> and you do it so well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Barbara, just one last one. Are we allowed to include pictures? Because sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. 
Uh, yeah, I think like you could include pictures, uh, maybe as part of your applicant profile, um, like, uh, cause that's like a supplementary doc that you'd include. So, or you could also email directly to info at the County Foundation. If you have some photos that you want to include, I, I'm happy to include that in the applications. I put them together, so. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, this was really wonderful. And I'm sure you know that there's going to be more questions that pop up that are specific to your applications, but I'm happy to, you know, chat more about uh, each of those as things come up and, you know, I'll be in touch and I'll do a follow up where I include Jane's information, uh, Kim, you know, uh, the survey, <laughs> you know, I'll link to vital signs, like I'll make sure that you've got all the things that you need. But in case, I'll, you know, this is being recorded and it will be added to the website if afterwards there's stuff that you want to reference back to later or, you know, say there's anyone from the future watching the live and you're like, OK, well, I would have really liked that email with all that information. All of the information is listed under the Municipal Community Grants page. So everything that I'm sending to this group is available online through our website, uh, just so everyone is clear on that. Okay, great. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, have a wonderful Tuesday. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. That was Bye. great. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.